I boosted his immune system. I boosted his white blood cells because all I did was increase blood flow to that finger and is your blood is your healer. That's the healer. In this video, Barbara O'Neill will guide you through the fascinating ways your body has the power to heal itself. Discover the natural processes that can lead to improved health and well-being. Gain insights into practical steps you can take to support your body's healing mechanisms. Let's see what Barbara has to say. So when we've got any type of problem in the body, what makes sense is to boost your white blood cells. It makes sense, doesn't it? Now, one way to boost them is a fever. And fevers have been used for centuries to boost the white blood cells to clean up any problems that might be in the body. So at Misty Mountain Health Retreat, every afternoon our guests, our guests go into a steam sauna. And the steam sauna, usually the temperature sits at around 46 degrees and you get very hot. And we give you a bucket of cold water with a little face cloth in it and you can keep your head cool because the only part of your body that doesn't like getting hot is your head, your brain. And about every 10 minutes, you can get out of that hot, run down the steps and dive into the mountain stream. And if you're not agile enough to run down the steps, there is a cold shower that you can do there. Some people say, cold shower? I said, you're, gonna, you're wanting one because you get so hot. And then back in the steam bath. And you might do that for about another 10 minutes and then charge out and dive in the cool pool again. You only need the cool for about 10, 15 seconds and then back into the hot sauna. Now, by the time you've, you've been 10 minutes in the third session of heat, your body temperature is usually up to about 40 degrees. That's a fever, yeah? Now, when your body is up to a fever state, and remember the only part of your body that doesn't like getting hot is your brain. And because you're running and diving in the mountain pool and then running back and keeping the head cool, your brain, your brain keeps quite good. Now, Barbara will delve into the nitty gritty details of how blood acts as a healer, exploring its vital functions and mechanisms. She will uncover the fascinating ways blood supports our body's natural healing processes. So when your body temp gets up to 40 degrees, your white blood cells sometimes can triple your metabolic rate increases by 400%. Wow. Do you know what that means? Healing increases by 400%. Your, your blood zooming around your body. Now, why is your blood the healer? Let's have a look at blood. Why is it the healer or the life of the flesh? It contains red blood cells and it contains white blood cells. And there are your white blood cells there. So what does the red blood cells contain? They carry oxygen. Oxygen, the most vital element needed for life. Cancer cannot live in the presence of oxygen. Makes a lot of sense to boost oxygen. Right? Red blood cells also carry your nutrients. They're carrying nutrients to the cell. Do you remember we've been looking at the CBD, the central business district of the human body, the inside working of the cells, what it is your, your blood that carries these nutrients and this oxygen to the cell. It also carries the water and it also carries away the waste. Carries away waste. So, so no wonder it's called the life, the life of the flesh. A concerned mother was distressed about her son's persistent finger injury, as medications were failing to heal it. Desperate for a solution, she turned to Barbara for guidance, and this is how she cured his finger. Listen to this. This is important. So let me, let me explain to you what we did for the little boys, only seven, with the finger. I said, what have you been doing? She said, well, he's on his second course of antibiotics. But this is 10 days on antibiotics. And I'm thinking, how could it have looked much worse than it is? Is it working? He's on his second course of antibiotics. Um, he's taking painkillers and sleeping tablets to sleep at night. Ugh. He's seven. 
I'm not criticizing the mother. What do you do? I said, can I try something? She said, please. So what I did was I got two mugs and in one mug, I put hot water. Now, when you have a hot shower at night, and the last two nights when I've got home, I've had a hot shower and it almost hurts at first. I didn't realize how cold I got. <laughs> and it's ah, stimulating, yeah? It's very nice, because we're warm-blooded creatures, so how we love them warm. So the hot water, when you initially apply it to the human body, it has a stimulating effect. It stimulates. But I think it's probably only about three minutes before I'm getting very relaxed. Is that right? And everything's slowing down. It's like you get into a hot bath. At first it's tingling, and then you can just about fall asleep. Is that right? So after three minutes, we get to a depressed, it's actually a depressed state of blood flow. Everything's slowing down, slow or depressed. And then I got a mug that had cold water in it. Now this is New Zealand, so we didn't have to put ice in it. If you're in Brisbane, you have to put ice in it. It's gotta be very cold. The hotter the hot, the colder the cold, the more powerful the reaction. But I'm not going to make this little boy put that sore finger in very hot water. I get him to put his good finger on and get him comfortable with that and then put the sore finger in. Ouch! I said, just keep dipping it. It's too hot. Okay, put a bit of cold in. You've got to work with the will of the person. When you put that finger in cold water, it stimulates. In fact, it's not unusual at Misty Mountain Health Retreat to hear screaming when people dive into the cold creek. <laughs> Agreed? It stimulates. It takes 30 seconds. Once you're in the cold, before we get to a depressed state of the blood everything starts to slow. So either called depressed or slow, it's a slowing down. So what I do is I put the finger in the hot for three minutes and then I put it in the ice cold for 30 seconds. And while it's in the ice cold, I put a little bit of boiling water into the hot to bring it up to the hot. He's watching me, so I say, put your good finger in. Are you happy with that? Yes, because I know once his finger's been in the cold, it'll handle more hot, numbs it a little bit. And then we keep it in the hot for how long? Three minutes. And then before it's got a chance to slow down, we plunge it back into the cold. And then before it's got a chance to slow down, we plunge it back into the hot. Can you see what we're doing? And you usually do that three times. So how long did that take? That takes hmm, 10, 11 minutes. By the end of the second hot, a big smile came to the little boy's face. What's happening? He's getting relief. In fact, by the end of the three, no, what was that? Uh, 12 minutes, and he's got 50% reduction in his pain levels. Experts often don't highlight how the body can heal itself, instead promoting medication as the primary solution. However, the body is remarkably capable of self-repair and recovery with the right support and understanding. Now that's quicker than Panadol, is that right? And we're not hurting his kidneys, or his stomach, or his liver. He's looking at me smiling and he's looking at his mother. And then I wrapped the finger in a grated potato poultice. Potato reduces inflammation. Potato draws waste out. Every home has a potato wrap. So I made a little, like a package, and then I put a bit of plastic over it and bandage it up and ask God to bless that finger. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more videos like this.